Stipe Miocic uh, really knocked Verdum dead, and now he's facing uh, Alistair Overeem in his hometown of Cleveland. Do you have a favorite in that fight? I know. You know what? Between Stipe and Overeem, I mean, Stipe's got some good hard hands and a good wrestling game, which uh, if that's what, what's initiating the pressure on, on, on Alistair, I can really see Alistair uh, paying the price for it. But he's a big, well-rounded, uh, you know, he's got such a great game with his kicks and his knees, uh, fighting from both stances. He could really, he could really confuse and, and hurt Stipe uh, in, in these exchanges. Uh, he's taller uh, as well, I believe. Uh, and, you know, Stipe had trouble with Stipe, uh, with uh, the skyscraper. Um, uh, he did, yeah. What's the tall Dutch dude's name again? Bob Schreiber. Stefan Struve. Stefan Struve. Hit yeah, Struve. Hit him with that inside uh, kick, and then that that punch that just knocked him out. Yeah. So I mean, you know, distance reach maybe could be an issue, but hey, man, everybody, most everybody has uh, their struggles in the ring from one time or another, and I. I do see it, uh, I guess, technically is somewhat of an upset that Stipe beat Verdum. I guess you have to look at it as an upset a little bit, but uh, I felt it was much more even than people were giving it credit. I think the most surprising part was how that fight happened to mm-hmm. to finish. But weird enough, I mean, Stipe just backpedaled, punched him, and then backpedaled and punched him again as Verdum just Same way he... Seemingly- same sprinted right into a fist two times. Same in a row. way he knocked I, out Philip DeFreeze, too. It was almost identical. Well, you know, the, the big dude's running at you, so Stipe is not going to yeah. stand there. And he didn't want to get tied up with them, like you know, at the moment. As it would appear, he wanted to keep distance and he wanted to box and kick more and and feel out that that striking exchange uh, as the, the round was progressing. And so here comes this big old son of a bitch come barreling at you. He's like, well, I'm going to get out of the way. Oh, they're right in front of me. Punch. You know, I don't know. If, and, and the look on Stipe's face is like, oh, shit, here he comes. And then it's just like punch. Well, yeah, of course, punch. That's what you're supposed to do. And he wobbles him. He's, he's kind of moving around. And he comes flying at him again. He moves back. Oh, okay, punch. <laughs> and he falls down, fights over. It's like, well, yay. That was nice. <laughs> He seemed shocked that he had won. He's running around. He's like, I'm the world champ. Maybe, was, but I think was, some of it was not the shock that he won, but just shocked that this, this mofo was flying at me, and I just punched yeah. him, and he flew at me again, and I punched him. and oh Yeah, okay, it's over. <laughs> you know, he's more surprised about, whew. The man you know, who, who baited Fedor. By, by, yeah. yeah. The man well, who baited guy, Fedor into his first loss walked not, into. Well, I, he didn't bait anything. He got swung around, hooked in the back of the head, and there was no way he was going to stand up with. Well, well, if you were to believe, if you were to time. believe him, yeah, he didn't bait shit. What he did was, <laughs> is he, is he happened to uh, work against Fedor's uh, um, his mistakes that he was doing in training and some of his patterns. So, Fedor had traditionally thrown the triangle off just shucked it by. It's what he did against Noguera over and over again. And now the other guys who've ever thrown a triangle up on him, he just throws it by. Well, Burdum is longer and he's got longer legs. So that's going to be more difficult. And you'll see Fedor swings on him. He closes the distance, starts clubbing him around the head, bowling forward. Burdum is all the way on his back. There ain't no way he's standing up. In fact, he might have even gotten dazed or clipped send him down there, but either way, he was off balance and he's going down. So he's on his back. Fedor dives in, as he has done his entire career, and Fedor throws up the triangle. What happens the first time? Fedor shucks the triangle off his head and throws it by. Fedor regards, and Fedor looks to dive in again. But the second time, he wasn't able to clear, couldn't get it off, couldn't get that triangle free, and then got armbarred. You know, but that's if you'd watched his fights before that, he's done it before. And I, I actually said, you know, I think if Fyodor was training the way he had been training in the past, and I don't believe that he was as focused and putting in the work that he that he had done in the past before that had, that had given him such a, a great win streak going into that fight against Burdum and going into that fight against Brett Rogers. And, uh, you know, we're not, we were not seeing a guy operating at his best. 
it's it's only his own fault. Nothing you, you can't make an excuse for that. But nonetheless, that wasn't Fyodor at his best. And I think at his best, still a risky endeavor to just think you're gonna shuck six foot five guys triangle off your head. But nonetheless, I don't know that that fight would have necessarily ended the way that it did. And we'll never know because that's not how it happened. But uh, yeah, there was no baiting. There was no baiting. That's fucking bullshit. He, I, I remember. He, 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 took, he took advantage of opportunity that that, that Fjordar gave him. 